Next Gen Resident Evil. Challenge accepted. Alright, we were... The story started where uh, me and Next Gen Resident Evil, he's also becoming like a Ubel, popular Ubel tuber, I guess Ubel tuber, on YouTube. So we were typing on Skype and he was like, well, I want to get together some of the good Ubel players and we can work on coming up with a Neo Swazin deck together. So I was like, oh, okay. Well, uh, I was going to try to do a general idea. So I uh, when after he tied that to me, I kind of just got into a network, slapped together a Neil Swassman deck in 10 minutes, and here we go. So I was totally ready for him to be like, okay, let's do this thing. And then all of a sudden, today, he just posts a Neil Swassman deck. And so I'm like, okay, okay, so you want to post yours? So you know what? I'm going to post mine. So I'm going to explain every card in here. All right, here we have two Neo Swassmans. In my opinion, one is too little, and three is too much, which can lead to dead draws. Sometimes. I mean, I tried to make it so um, whenever you draw the Neo Swiseman, you're ready to summon him. But sometimes that, of course, is the game of Yu Gi Oh! Sometimes that's just not possible. So I like two. Um, he also played two Neo Swiseman in his deck. Um, I'm going to post a link in the description and, of course, a note so you guys can go ahead and check out his version of the Neo Swiseman deck. We have two U Bells, just like in my U Bell deck. I like to run two. Uh, assuming that there's one in my hand and one in the graveyard. But this deck can handle Ubel being in hand a little bit differently than just a regular Ubel deck, and I'll get to that in a second. One Terror Incarnate, one Ultimate Nightmare, of course. Despite being a Neo Swiseman deck, I gotta run the Ubel build. Um, just gotta have that Ubel being able to just upgrade. Plus, uh, Terror Incarnate plus Neo Swiseman. Terror Incarnate wipes the field at the end, but Neo Swiseman can't be destroyed by card effects. So, he wouldn't be destroyed. So, yeah, that is good. We run two tomatoes. I actually lost my, my favoritism towards Mystic Tomato. I'm starting not to like it as much. But for this deck, it works, because if my opponent attacks it, not only can I summon an Armageddon Knight, but then I can also summon a Ubel, which may lead to a Neo Swiseman summoning next turn, depending on my hand. So, definitely like to set that Mystic Tomato, which can lead into a Neo Swiseman play. That's why Mr. Tomato's in here. We have Stygian Street Patrol, just one. Uh, this is mainly just for Armageddon Knight Dark Rifle. Just drop it in the graveyard, and uh, a few bells in my hand, and I'm ready to go for a Neo Swiseman Summon. I can just remove from play this card and special summon the Ubel from my hand. So, usually I wouldn't run this in a regular Ubel deck, because once I have the Ubel on the field, there's pretty much, much nothing for me to go into. But since, of course, this is a Neo Swiseman deck, if I'm ready, and I can go for it. Uh, sure, I will move this guy from play to special summon a U Bell from my hand. Then I could still use my normal summon to summon the Neos, and then tribute those two. I mean, not tribute. Send those two to the graveyard and special summon Neo Swiseman. Uh, we got one Dark Greffer. Dark Greffer is not really needed in this deck. Uh, it's more Arm leaning towards Armageddon Knight. But of course, just sometimes the cards get in your hand, and you know, Dark Greffer is just good at keeping track of things. He is an awesome card. He has won me plenty of duels, and you know what? He just needed to be in here, just in case, just in case. Just in case, I mean, there's a chance that I'll draw both the bells, and Mr. Tomato will be almost useless. Well, no, because I, I can still summon Armageddon Knight and drop this Daijin. So you, you see how it goes? I'm making sure that I can address the, the monsters from different directions. Uh, Tomato will bring the bell from my deck, the Stygian will let me special summon from the hand, and then the limit reverse in the call will let me bring it from the grave. So, definitely trying to keep control the deck to make sure that when it's time to summon Neo Swiseman, it is time to summon Neo Swiseman. Of course, we got our Armageddon Knights. He is awesome. When he's summoned, I can send a Dark Monster from my deck to the graveyard. Um, not sure if it'll be you, Bell. I mean, it really depends on the hand. I mean, if I got a limit reverse and I'm ready to go, and maybe sometimes I need to summon Terra Incarnate and stall, I'll sure I'll drop the you, Bell, but, uh, I'll probably lean towards dropping Stygian or Necroshade, which I'll get to in a second. We have two Elemental Hero Neoses, just like you, Bell, assuming that one could be in my hand and one in the deck. I do not run Neos Alias in this deck. In my opinion, he is too slow. And another thing that I don't like about the Neos Alias deck is that there's no Doom Shaman, which means there's no Tinker, which means there's no Synchron Link. So as you guys can see by the extra deck, there is no synchros. But you guys definitely know I am known for doing some synchroing plays, but I don't have room in this deck. I definitely had to 
get everything I needed in order and squeeze down to 40 for more consistency. So I do not run Alias, he is too slow, so I like to run Neos himself, and I run the Neos Prisma build. Um, I do not believe that Next Gen Resident Evil ran the Prisma build, I don't think. I think we talked about it once and he said that he didn't like it, which that's his opinion, but I feel like this is much faster. Um, just setting that tomato, they attack, you bell, next, my turn, summon Prisma, show him a Neos uh, fusion, send Neos to the grave, he becomes Neos, and send us to the graveyard for Neos Wiseman, so look how easy that was. Definitely easy. Um, even other plays, you know, I could summon Armageddon Knight, drop Stygian, uh, my turn again, uh, move and play the Stygian, special summon you bell, normal summon the Prisma, send Neos to the graveyard, uh, it becomes Neos, and then there you go, Neos Wiseman again. Even call the haunted, you know? I want to address every possibility. So, then we have Necro Shade, and once while he's in the graveyard, I can normal, normal summon one level 5 or higher elemental hero monster with no tributes. So, that's in case Neos gets in my hand, you know? So, once again, I'm addressing each place of Neos, just like Yvel. If he's in the deck, I'll go with Prisma. If he's in my hand, I'll go with Necro Shade. And if he's in the graveyard, I have o Oversoul and Call Hunted, which I'll get to in a second. So, just like you, Bell, they can be brought back, brought from three different directions, which makes the ability to get Neo Swagman much quicker. We have two Gold Sarks. Uh, in my opinion, I really don't like Gold Sark. It's kind of slow. Like, most of the time when I activate Gold Sark, it'll probably be like my next card. But, you know what? If I can banish a Neo Swagman, and maybe even a situation where I might even have to banish a, a Limit Reverse and hold out until I can get to Limit Reverse. Sometimes I uh, did that in my previous days of Neo Swagman deck. But, just banishing that Neo Swagman, and then that gives me two turns to set up for when I get him to my hand. And then if I can have those two turns to be set up, Neo Swagman will get summoned. So, in this deck, two gold sarcophagus is good, and I believe that next gen Resident Evil win too, also. We have O Oversoul. Uh, this is mainly for when Neos is in the graveyard. Whether it be I put him there with Foolish, or I sent him there with Prisma. Uh, just being able to just bring him back from the graveyard when I'm ready, you know? Uh, maybe he's in the graveyard already, you know? Uh, move from play, Stadion, special summon the bell from my hand. O Oversoul, bring out the Neos. So, instead of waiting that turn for calls to be ready, uh, it's just a spell card, it's basically the monster reborn for Neos, so definitely a quick way for me to just jump into Neos Wiseman. We have two E emergency calls. Uh, it can let me get any elemental hero from my deck to my hand, so if Neko shades in the graveyard and I am ready to go, uh, just play the E emergency call and I get Neos to my hand, or I can get Stratos, which I, then I can get uh, Neos, or Prisma, or Prisma himself. Just lots of connections. The deck needs lots of connections to be able to prepare to be able to summon Neos Wiseman. Of course, we have two pot of dualities. You know, I love my pot of duality. That is the only pot that I love. If pot of duality was a real pot, I would smoke it. Alright, don't quote me on that. But I love pot of duality. I still don't like that it went down to two, but I understand why it went down to two. Uh, but I wish... That I could have kept it at three. It was working really well in the Ubel deck, but of course, I gotta have my pot of dualities. You know, just revealing those top three cards, it can definitely be beneficial. So, of course, I had to throw that up in here. We have our staples, our monster reborn, our dark hole, uh, heavy, heavy reinforcements, and foolish reinforcements can get a good majority of the cards in here. It can get. Is he a warrior? Oh, he's a fiend. Okay. I didn't know. <laughs> we can get Granfer, we can get Armageddon Knight, we can get Stratos, we can get Prisma. So, Rota will definitely be good and setting up into more of the Neo Swiseman plays. And of course, we have Foolish. Foolish can not only drop you a bell, but maybe if the situation comes in, might even be able to drop Neos. I mean, Armageddon and Gar Granfer can, of course, cannot drop Neos to the graveyard since he is a light monster, but Foolish can. So, that's also beneficial. Three limit reverse. Um, despite this being a Neo Swiseman deck, I unlike next gen Resident Evil, which 
nothing bad, but he leaned more towards an elemental hero build, while, of course, me being your master, I tried to lean more to a Ubel build. So, despite this being a Neo Swipeman deck, if I can summon out Ubel and go into a Terra Incarnate, that will be great too. But, of course, this, the Limit Reverse can help me to summon Ubel, and which can lead into uh, me summoning Neos and going into a Neos Swipeman play. So, that is definitely good. Of course, you know, I gotta have my Call of the Haunted. I like usually playing three, but I really had to uh, trade one out before I had one older Soul and two calls. But uh, when it comes to bringing out Neos from the graveyard for the Neos Wideman summoning play, it's much quicker if I activate an older Soul than me wait for the Call of the Haunted. I could have played Swing like I do with Doom Shaman, but the problem with Swing is that it gets destroyed at the end of the turn. While with o Oversoul, it stays on the field, so it's like a monster born. So, um, if even if the times aren't right, o Oversoul can let me summon a 25 beater, which is the attack barrier. So, that could also be good. But, of course, I gotta play my Call of the Haunted, because Call of the Haunted can bring back more than what o Oversoul can go, you know? Um, I can set the Call of the Haunted, have you bell in the graveyard, right? a MST, a chain, you bell summon, destroy Terran Carne. I can chain, Armageddon Knight, drop a dark monster, you know? And, uh, of course, um, yeah, I don't I, can I? Yeah. When Stratus is normal summon or special summon, so Stratus is in the graveyard, I can call, uh, chain call, summon Stratos, and get a search. Uh, what else can I do? Yeah, or, and of course, just summon Neos, and go for a Neos and play. So, two calls, not the usual three, but, well, the two over, o over souls, it will be perfectly fine. We have two safe zones. I know you guys haven't seen this card in a while. It is not in the Ubel Inferno deck, which I understand. I took it out. But in this deck, it works really well. Not only can you equip it to Ultimate Nightmare and go into some seriously damaging plays, because, of course, you're not going to see Ultimate Nightmare attacking directly, which, say some restricts, you can't attack your opponent directly with this card equipped. But the monster cannot be targeted or destroyed by your opponent's card effects, so they basically have to destroy the safe zone. And then when safe zone is destroyed, you destroy the monster equipped with it. So, but even better, you can equip Neos Wiseman with safe zone. And then, since Neos Wiseman can't be destroyed by card effects, when even if they do happen to destroy the safe zone, uh, Neos Wiseman is not destroyed, which is good. I mean, I'm sure he can't dr attack directly, and he's a 3,000 beer, but his effect that at the end of the damage step, if this card battled an opponent's monster, you inflict the damage equal to their monster's attack, and you gain the defense. Um, hey, that can be some serious, serious damage. Just not even being able to attack directly. I mean, just summon something else and attack them directly with that. So, save some to protect the Oswineman would definitely be really good. Uh, protect them from those deep prisons and stuff. You can't protect them from Compulse, because Compulse would already target him before the card activated. But Deep Prison, you can protect. Um, can't really think of anything else, because the majority of the cards I'm thinking of actually destroy him. So, uh, Neos Wasm is a, definitely a good card. He can't even be Bottomless, because uh, Bottomless has destroy, then remove from play. Since he wasn't destroyed, because he can't be destroyed card back, he's not removed from play. So, that is definitely good. And, of course, we have the two Torrental Tributes. Uh, I love Torrental, Torrental Tribute in my Yubel deck. Uh, not only can you go to Tomato being destroyed, summoning you Bell, actually trying to attribute Terran Carne, but since Neos Wiseman can't be destroyed by card effects, if you if your opponent summons a monster and you turn to attribute, all monsters are destroyed except for Neos Wiseman because he can't be destroyed by card effects, so that will be great because then you'll have a 3000 beater getting ready to attack your opponent directly. Yeah. Uh, now we have the. So, well, this is supposed to be the extra deck, but I kind of just threw it in the side deck. My bad, I was kind of rushing. So, this is supposed to be the extra deck. So, if I would, if I do it with this deck, of course, I would have no extra deck. I, I know, I'm not the only one done that, but you guys have done that a few times, too. It's kind of embarrassing. We have Gumbo Hero Chaos Neos. He's my favorite version of the Neos Fusion, so I like to dump him here. And the reason why he's my favorite, which I don't, I know, I got it sometimes, so I'll explain it. There was actually a misprint of him where his name was Rainbow Dragon. So, his name was like literally Rainbow Dragon, not Elemental Hero Chaos Neos. So, I happened to pull one of those, and it was just a really cool card, because of course, I could just mess around with my opponent. You know, I could be like, 
uh, Prisma, I show you Rainbow Dragon, and then I send <laughs> Elemental Hero Neil to the grave because his name was Rainbow Dragon, but that would be pretty funny. But he's here for Prisma's sake to be able to reveal a fusion so I can send Neos to the grave so he can become uh, Elemental Hero Neos. We won Elemental Hero Dark Bright because it has Necro Shade, so in case uh, you know, I have Neos in my hand, and I have Prisma, you know, I can summon Prisma, show you Necro Shade, and then I can, I mean, show you Dark Bright, and I can send Necro Shade to the graveyard to be able to normal summon Neos next turn with no tributes. So, there you go. We have a lot of level 4s in this deck. We have Tomato, Stygian, Graffer, Armageddon, Stratos, Prisma, so we're going to have pretty much all level 4 XCs. So we're going to have two Utopias. I really don't personally like Utopia since I'm a Ubel player. You know, if I'm going to block with Utopia, I can just block with Ubel. But, you know, sometimes Utopia is just a good card so you can just stall out for a few turns and get yourself situated to summon the Neos Wiseman. Two Blade Armors, since uh, the good majority of my warriors, Greffer, Armageddon, Stratos, Prisma. So, Blade Armor, sure, you know do that damage. I mean, if they're open and ready and asking for it. Two, ex here are Champion Excalibur. I love Excalibur. He definitely gets over the problem monsters that I run into sometime. Especially Stardust. Especially Stardust. He's like, like, Stardust hate for me. So, Excalibur just, oh, I have you bell and you keep on negating and destroying my you bells and stuff? Oh, well, I'll just summon Excalibur and chop it in half, run it over. There we go, not coming back. I don't have to worry about it anymore. So, definitely gotta have my Excalibur. We have the Gusto Emerald. He is an expensive card. He actually came out in TCG, and I think he's like 50, 30 to 50 bucks. But he is definitely good. You Once per turn, you can detach an XP material. He's two level fours, 18 meter. You can target three monsters in your graveyard and then shuffle them back into your deck and draw a card. So let's say that Neo Swiseman actually got destroyed and sent to the graveyard. Maybe he got ran over. Uh, you can target him, put him back in the deck, shuffle, draw a card. Maybe you can draw another Neo Swiseman and go for another Neo Swiseman. But definitely the reason why he's at two in extra deck is because you can target you can target one non-effect monster in your graveyard and special summon that target. So this wouldn't work with Doom Shaman since he is uh, an effect monster despite being a normal monster. He is an effect monster, so that wouldn't work. But a non-effect monster, or a vanilla monster, is Elemental Hero Neos. So you can use Daigusto Emerald to summon Neos and go to a Neos Legend play, or just summon a 25 beater. Why not? Uh, Papua Operative, uh, kind of a level 4, I mean rank 4 staple, you know. Change your defense position monster to attack, and it loses. Since you're under attack, attack it with Neos Wiseman. They take the monster's attack, you gain the defense, and then they take the difference in battle, of course. So, uh, pretty much if Neos Wiseman battles a monster in attack position, they're your opponent's taking 3,000 damage because they're going to take the battle difference. So, let's say my opponent has a Stardust, and I have Neos Wiseman. I attack, they take the 500, and then Neos Wiseman's effect activates, so they take their monster's attack. So, they're taking the 25. So they're taking 3,000 damage. Whether or not uh, the monster it the attack of the monster or whatever. But Paprovda, sure, put it in attack mode. They lose 700 attack, why not? It's a pretty cool card. Uh, Black Ship of Porn. I know, it's Black Ship of Corn, but I like calling it Black Ship of Porn. Like, can you just imagine like that ship full of porno magazines? Alright, alright, I'm getting too inappropriate here. My younger viewers won't be able to watch this video. Um, it's a good card, definitely handling since I don't have starters and I can't synchro. It's mainly for Zen mains, you know, you detach it here until you attack one monster my opponent controls to attack less than this, so it's Zen mains. And I send it to the graveyard, not just show it, send it to the graveyard, and then I inflict a thousand damage. I mean, this card can attack the turn and deactivate the effect, but I got them named out of the way, so that's good. We have one Dire Wolf, the Terra Fang. Uh, I tried to stop myself from playing cards that aren't out yet, but I totally forgot that this card's not out yet. It's coming out in Cosmo Blazer, though, so not that far away, so if you guys actually want to make this deck, um, toss him in there. He's about to come out. 
He's kind of like a scrap dragon, so once per turn you can detach one Xavier material from this card to target one beast, beast warrior, or winged beast monster you control and one card on the, on the field, and then destroy him. So, I mean, even if you have, like, you bell, and you bell's just sitting there, you can summon this card guy, you can target himself, because he is a beast, and then you can target one card on the field, so it doesn't even need your opponent's card, so in that matter, he might be a little bit better than Scrap Dragon right there. Uh, so I can target Ubel and destroy it, Terra Incarnate, or, I can, of course, I can target one of my opponent's cards, which is kind of what makes it kind of like a Scrap Dragon, and destroy that. But, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a suicidal card, because there's no other beast, beast warrior, or wouldn't beast monsters in this deck besides him. So he targets himself, so he kills himself to kill another card, which sometimes you might just have to do, so it's good to have him there just to have him there. Steel Storm Roach, just to slow down your opponent, uh, you know, negate those special summons of those level 5 or higher, uh, but of course you can't get the trigger effect, so you can't stop, like, you bell summon. Uh, I'm not sure if you could stop Neo Swazman's summon. I guess he would never be summoned in the first place, and I know he's in the condition effect. So I guess, since he would never be summoned, I guess his effect never activates, so I guess you can get Neo Seismin. But since Terran Carnate was summoned from the trigger effect of Yubel, you cannot uh, hit Terran Carnate. I mean, I guess if you, your opponent special summons... I mean, yeah, if your opponent special summons Yubel, you can detach and destroy the Yubel, but then Terran Carnate would be summoned, so that really doesn't resolve the problem. And then we have my stroke, the 7 Nitrogen, because, you know, he can't be destroyed. Well, he can be destroyed, but you just remove an Xenia material, and then he's kind of like a Book of Moon, so he's pretty good. So, I do not really have a side deck, but if I could recommend any card, and I'm just this, just off the top of my mind, if I can recommend one card to put in your side deck for a Neosaurus deck, I definitely recommend Honest, because Honest could be so deadly with Neo Swiseman. I'm gonna tell you guys this story. Before I started my YouTubing, I was working on a Neo Swiseman deck and I pretty much just gave up. It was pretty hard to make it competitive. I mean, this deck is pretty nice right here, and if you guys wanna go ahead with it, I, it's probably like the best Neo Swiseman deck I made, because last time I was just trying to go way into Ubel. Uh, I was just trying to throw in Doom Shamans and, and Tinkers and Sink and just too much for the deck to handle, and it got way too many cards, so I kind of just gave up on it. But, yeah, I threw this deck together in, like, ten minutes. But, honest, because I was dueling with the deck. I had Neos Wiseman. My opponent, who was running Chaos Dragons, this was before September 2012, he, uh, you know, Feature Fusion slash Dragon Mirrored, and summoned Five God Dragon. FGD. Five-Headed Dragon. And, of course, you know, Five headed dragon has 5,000 attack, and my Neo Swiseman has 3,000 attack. So he attacked me to run me over because I was causing him problems. Well, it was gonna problem him problems. I haven't touched his life points, he was at 8,000. It wasn't a causing problem, so he tried to run me over. He knew that he was gonna take 5,000, but at least Neo Swiseman's out of the way. Dropped the Honest. Honest, since Neo Swiseman is a light, I went up to 8,000. We battled, he took 3,000. Neo Swiseman's effect activates. At the end of the damage step, if this card, if this card battled an opponent's monster, it's like damage. To your opponent equal to the monster's attack, 5,000 game. Yeah, so I literally OTK'd my opponent on his turn with just Neo Swiseman and Honest. So, if you guys are thinking about running a Neo Swiseman deck, I definitely recommend that you side Honest. Or if you want to main deck it, sure, but I would side it because Neo Swiseman's at 3,000 meter. That's over the attack barrier. There's not a very good chance that your opponent will be able to summon a monster that's higher than Neo Swiseman. I mean. The most threatening thing you'll see is your opponent would probably summon like a Black Lesser Soldier and try to banish you, but maybe you have Save Zone, so you can activate Save Zone, put it on your Swiseman. Next turn, battle Kamikaze, but since you can't be destroyed by battle, the, just their Black Lesser Soldier would be destroyed, and then they take 3,000 damage. But he's 3,000 beater, 3,000 attack, 3,000 D, so even if they book a Moon in, he still has 3,000 D. You know, he doesn't have like a weak spot like Dark Arm Dragon that can be killed by a Tsukiyomi. But, he's a 3,000 billion that can't be destroyed by card effects, so none of those power cards, you know, no Torrential Tribute, no Dark Hole. So once he's on the field, it's almost pretty much game. Your opponent is definitely going to have to use, a, hopefully they run a Compulsionary device. Because if their answer to your summon is a bottomless trap hole, or like a Torrential or something, he's not destroyed. Dark Hole, nope. 
So, I uh, hope you guys enjoy this deck profile and next gen Resident Evil if you are checking out my deck. And uh, uh, I will definitely hype up your deck. You, I want you, I want you viewers to compare because I want you guys to determine whose deck is better. I mean, I, I mean, of course, both decks are fine and they work differently, which is perfectly fine. Um, this isn't the first time I made a Garunix Phoenix build deck, and then he did too, and they were totally different, but they were both perfectly fine. But I want to, I want you guys to compare the decks and tell me whose would be better because I, I kind of took it a challenge upon myself to make this deck. If you guys are wondering if I'm going to use this in a video, maybe, maybe, maybe. But I, in my opinion, I kind of don't like it because I, I like synchroing. Synchro is fun. It's just like, if I can win a duel without even summoning you belt and synchro, that's just really cool. So, of course, I tried to make the deck as best as possible just like being a Neo Swiseman deck. If I can win the duel without summoning Neo Swiseman, then that'd be cool too. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile. I'm not sure what deck profile I'll do next, but I kind of just wanted to make this deck real quick and just take Next Gen Resident Evil's challenge to come up with a Neo Swiseman deck since. I mean, he did say I'm one of the best U-Bell players, and I hope you guys agree that I'm a pretty respectable U-Bell player, so might as well, good U-Bell player that I am, take the challenge to make a Neil Swiseman deck. So, of course, there will be more vitamin-wise, maybe including this deck, I don't know, I don't know, and other things to come, so do usual, like, come subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.